Alright. <clears throat> peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Let me see how many of y'all gonna jump on here. I just got home. And I know a lot of people, I know I had to put my children to bed and get them back on the schedule and everything because um, school started back. So, I was like, well, let me jump on here real quick while I have time and then whoever else wants to jump on here when they have time, if they have time, all is well. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love, Shamika. Peace and love, peace and love. It has been a minute, but I had some time. And um, for one, to reflect, I really had to do my own shadow work and a lot of stuff going on. And then for two, peace and love, Shamika. I was like, this is the second full moon in the um, month of, of this season. And so definitely with this blue moon and everything going on, I was like, let me jump in real quick. I know a lot of people did different videos and lives and stuff. And I haven't went live in a while talking about astrology. I've actually been on TikTok a little bit more and just getting acquainted with TikTok and kind of building a following on on different platforms. And so that's why I was like, I wasn't going to be on Facebook for a while, but... I'm up in here. I miss y'all. Peace and love, everybody. I miss y'all. It's a different vibe on TikTok. Um, however, you know, Facebook is where I started. So, I was like, you know, let me get on here for a second. And plus, with TikTok, you have to have, like, a thousand followers in order to go live. And I don't have a thousand followers on TikTok yet. So, I'm like, let me go back to where I normally go. But, um, all is well. This full moon... In Aquarius was all all the season in general with um, this this Sun and Leo um, have been a lot of shifts and changes for all of us and a lot of people have experienced a lot of different things and a lot of different ways people and things um, in your life things happen in beneficial ways so there are a lot of miracles a lot of um, opportunities and things that have really come into a lot of our favor but then there have also been a lot of disasters okay and a lot of things that have gone against a lot of us and a lot of things that a lot of us had to adjust to and so when you're talking about Aquarius um, in high self you are talking about the game changer you are talking about um, the humanitarian you are talking about the unicorn of the zodiac and you're always talking about somebody that's very innovative and somebody that has their own style and their own way of doing things and the reason why though at their lower self um, Aquarius has to do with a whole lot of shifts and things that happen Okay, so that's why they have to adjust properly, and this is why their intellect is very high, their ability to adjust to different things that take place. And so their coping skills, all right, can really be really, really good. And this is an air sign, so these are signs that can, um, uh, I would say, shape shift. They can just really morph into any different situation. They're very flexible. No different from a Aquarius. I'm sorry, a Libra and a Gemini. Air signs are very, very flexible, and water signs can bend as well in different ways, um, except for a Scorpio, <laughs> which we'll get into that. But um, <clears throat> with this full moon, you're right. This was really highlighting. Okay, everybody that is aligned in higher self with this, and this is um, especially uh, fire signs. This full moon is really good for fire signs, so this is good for Leos, <clears throat> this is good for um, Sagittarius and Aries, okay, because this makes a lot of different opportunities for those fire signs, and so this was really good for those fire signs to instigate the air and really move around and really let, um, <clears throat> you know, that Aquarius energy just really morph and um, empower what the fire signs already do. So this is really, really good for, uh, like I say, all the fire signs. Aqu um, keep on saying Aquarius, Aries, uh, Sagittarius, <clears throat> Leo. This can be opposing anywhere in Leo in your chart or anywhere with Leos in the past couple of weeks with that new moon. This can oppose situations, things, opportunities, or anywhere where you are trying to start over. So this is why I always talk about spiritual uh, roaches 
okay? A new moon is always going to give you a new lease, all right? A new six-month lease. And so you start and fresh with a new moon. A full moon is always the end of a cycle, okay? When you start a new cycle, you are supposed to be aligned and you're supposed to do your shadow work before the new moon. And so this is why spiritual roaches, people and things that you were supposed to let go of, you know, people and things, habits, however, that you were supposed to cut off, sneak back into your life. Okay, so that's why I call them roaches because your new moon is your preventative stage. Your new moon is saying this is where I already was. This is the reason why I'm starting fresh. <clears throat> In a relationship, a job, anything, a new moon is saying that this is the reason why. <clears throat> the full moon is showing you the reason why. So the new moon, you already know the reason, but the full moon explains. So with this full moon is explaining why a lot of us <clears throat> needed to make changes that full moon is explaining a lot of reasons why things weren't going right. <clears throat> Anything that you had to question or anybody you had to question or any situation, like I said, where a decision needed to be made or where you were on the, I would say, on the crossroads of life, just kind of, you know, stuck in a situation or in a standstill, the full moon is showing you the decision that needs to be made. And so I always say to stay in your master position, you want to make the decision. Because in a slave position, the universe is going to shift on you and you are going to be on the result of something that happened because you didn't, like I say, use yourself. So that goes back to where you have all your fire signs in your chart or if you are a sun sign, um, fire sign. This was an awesome time for you to be the master of the situation. Okay? Um, a lot of water signs, okay, may have felt some things on the other end of it. Okay, because a lot of times what air signs and water signs do to each other, there's not always a whole lot of harmony here. It, regardless of the actual sign, just because there's a water sign and an air sign. Okay, and so <clears throat> water signs, okay, this whole month may not have been necessarily the best. I'm not going to say it's gonna, it was the worst, specifically Scorpio. Okay, <clears throat> Scorpio is um, a challenging energy to uh, Leo. Okay, Scorpio is the darkness, Leo is the light, so that's why I say anywhere where you haven't taken care of things in the shadows, your Scorpio challenge, wherever you're supposed to be a superstar this month, wherever you're supposed to be at your best and having the best light and being your best self this month, um, Scorpio, which is your secrets, your hidden things, or things that need to be healed or discussed, or things that need to, I would say, need some type of reconstruction in your life, those things can come when you're on the stage which is where Leo is in your life. And so this is why I always say the shadow work is very important. So Scorpios, this could have been a challenging time. Or if you have Scorpios specifically like in the 4th house, 8th um, house, 12th house. If you have a Scorpio energy in those water sign houses, that was also very, um, could be very disharmonious for a whole lot of people this time. Um, let me see here. Earth signs. Depending on what your earth sign is, it still wasn't always the best. However, what helped you if you was an earth sign was this Mercury. Now Mercury is in Virgo. So these earth signs have a whole lot of quality to the things that they're doing right now. Or wherever you have it in your chart. Remember, uh, Pluto is still retrograde and we still have retrograding planets. So wherever you have it in your chart could also cause a detriment in different things right now. So let's go back to this full moon in Aquarius. This full moon in Aquarius, um, like I said, brought a lot of opportunities through people you know, associates. You know, this is a good time for people to be networking, a lot of shifts. A lot of people might be getting fired right now. Aquarius is the hiring and the firing of the Zodiac. Aquarius, like I said, is an unpredictable change that can happen. If you are the master, you create that change. And so if you are the master, you are breaking up with somebody or you are quitting a job or you are deciding what changes are going to happen in your business. If you are not, okay, the slave is getting fired, the slave is getting broken up with, the slave don't know what they're going to do. So I always say in alignment, it keeps you prepared and it keeps you walking that fine line and that tightrope of the universe, okay? So anytime you're too above it, those are things you need to work on. Anytime you're too below it, those are things you need to work on. So that's why you have to equal yourself out in your behaviors and equal yourself out with your good karma and your bad karma. A lot of people, if this was not a good month for you, if Leo season was not the best for you, there are things that have gone on in your past that have made this month, this season, not the best for you. So now moving forward, you know, you still want to consider your future. And depending on your chart, everybody's future date is different. And so the next few months from now have a whole lot to do with what happened this month. So now even talk about short term today. 
today, a lot of things that happen today with this full moon, yesterday, today, and tomorrow have a whole lot to do with the next couple of weeks. So that helps you prepare for your next couple of weeks, but it also so you're not surprised about anything that happens in the next couple of weeks. Okay, the next couple of weeks could be a celebration, a party, a lot of things taking place for a whole lot of people. So this is a good time to take advantage of the energy, the people that you know, the new people you're involved with, the relationships you're involved with, people that you've connected with on a good end. Okay. Wherever there has been drama, wherever you have been getting into with anybody, anybody, like I said, you've had a question more than once, okay? Because I only take one time, okay? The stove is hot when it comes to people, and this is why Leo deals with loyalty. Leo is a fire sign, and so this is opposed by right now Aquarius. You either align with Aquarius right now because it's still Leo season, or you are not, okay? And so Aquarius, like I said, brings the crowd, it brings the innovation, it brings what makes you different, it, it brings what makes you unique, it really makes you stand out in the crowd, okay? Leo stands away from everybody else. Aquarius is the crowd, but you still are you within the crowd, okay? And so Leo opposes that because Leo wants to be on their own. Aquarius is the audience. Wherever you have it networked with, that's why I say, or wherever you have it moved through the audience or gotten to know people, this is why a lot of people businesses are not flourishing. This is why a lot of people are not in relationships that want to be right now. You have to circulate. Okay, so if Leo is your cardiovascular system, Aquarius is your circulatory system. You have to circulate in order to what move move energy to your heart, right? And so in order to have something that gives you passion, that gets you excited, to get that law of attraction moving, you have to circulate energy. All right, so if Aquarius is your circulatory system, it's also what your ankle. Your ankle is what connected to your feet and also your leg. Your leg is your Aquarius and your foot is your Pisces, right? So what you believe and what you do, which is, Aqu um, which is um, Capricorn, connects you through who you know, which is Aquarius. So this is how your body is made, through who you know what you do. So if, like I say, if Capricorn is your knees and your legs, then Aquarius is your ankle. And this attracts you and connects you to your, your feet, your trust, your faith, which is Pisces. You have to have people that you know and people that connect to you, people who have like minds, people who are part of your purpose to be aligned with. And this was the month to do that. Wherever you weren't aligned, that's why you had people who you had to question. This is why you had people who were disloyal. Or sometimes some of y'all were, were the disloyal one. Okay, because that's what was happening in the shadows. Wherever I didn't do things right by other people or how I handle things when people don't do right by me. Also in the shadows is when I don't circulate and when I don't have confidence to be around other people, to share things, to be seen and to be heard. That is in the shadows of why we're not getting the things that we want right now. <clears throat> a lot of people are on celebratory mode. Okay, so this full moon, a lot of people are celebrating. A lot of people are having a good time. A lot of people are enjoying the fruits of their labor. Why? Because they was out in the yard doing the work. Because, you know, you still have to be out there. And a lot of people don't want to do that. And you have to in order to reap the benefits. And so with, when you still have um, retrograde planets like Pluto, Pluto is measuring how much work you do. Okay, and so if this is about to be um, Virgo season. Okay, Scorpio season is right around the corner. You want to honor what Pluto is telling you to do while it's retrograding, and it's telling you to have integrity and put in the work and do what you're supposed to do, but it's also telling you to have a cycle of people that you trust and people that you connect to that can help you get things done. And not being able to do that, not doing that at all, this is why Scorpio season is going to suck for a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be really sad. A lot of people are going to be mad in debt mentally, physically, and spiritually because they didn't do the work in Scorpio season, which is what I'm sorry, in Leo season now, which is why it's saying they challenge each other. So what you do in one month challenges what you do in the next month. What you do in one day challenges what you do the next day and moving on and um, so forth. So your opportunities are the same way. There, like I say all the time, certain people are in your life for certain seasons and certain reasons. Certain people you put back on the shelf and you don't play with them until it's their season. We get confused sometimes about who are in our life and what season they're in. And so this is why you be out of style in your life because you get you in the wrong season with the wrong people. And so we just have to know what we're harvesting and who's a part of that crop. Okay, and so um, that's why I say sometimes things are not growing, wrong people, wrong season, wrong tools, wrong everything. All right, and so you want to make sure that everything is thriving, not surviving. Surviving is not what you want. You want to thrive because surviving, you don't even have time. You, you, surviving is only being in your root chakras, you guys. Surviving is just in your root chakra and your, um, and your sacral chakra. 
You don't even get to thrive until you get to your solar plexus and your heart chakra. A lot of people are going to spend their whole life in their root chakra. And not even in the root chakra, not even fulfilling the root chakra, it's just there. Okay? Eat, sleep, shit, and having sex. Like the basics, right? Some people don't know what it is to dress their food up, right? Some people don't know what it is to dress their love up, right? Some people don't know how to put seasoning on their food, their love, their desires, or any of those things. They just paying bills and they just here, right? And so as you move up to your solar plexus and your heart chakra, you start to add seasoning to your life. Right, And then, then you get to move to your throat chakra. You get to start putting what you want and saying how you want it a certain way. You assert yourself a lot better. right? And so then when you get to your third eye and your crown chakra, this is when you're really in tune and you can listen to the spirit. And now you're actually serving and doing your work. And a lot of people will never get to get to this point right? because they're still just paying bills. Okay, and so they're still just trying to survive, all right, and they're still just a part of this world. You don't want it to be a part of this world, okay, <laughs> and you're not just a part of this world, <clears throat> you are this world, and you're just honoring yourself. So now it's just being in tune. And so Aquarius is a part of your third eye chakra and your crown chakra. Aquarius is a very powerful and it's a high sign, okay. Aquarius and Pisces are very high signs, all the signs are high signs, but some of the signs only get us through basic survival. Okay, like Aries, basic, that's the basic survival sign. You need to be able to see and you need to be able to fight. Aries teaches you that. Okay, sight, you know, being able to just use your energy a certain way, your awareness. Aries will teach you that. You know, um, Taurus will teach you how to secure yourself. Taurus will teach you what your value looks like. Taurus will teach you what your crown looks like and what your, what your, your throne looks like. Gemini teach you how to send the mail. So pretty much moving through every sign, they all teach you how to do different things and they move through your body in different ways. Aquarius right now is talking about your ankles and who's connected to your purpose and who's put, uh, connected to your beliefs. Okay? And the blind spot of everything that you do is the sign always right beside you. And so that's why all this month Aquarius was asking you, um, in general, in the shadows, who do you trust? Okay? And that's why the who you trust and who you can spend time with your eyes closed around is very vital for your life. Alright? Who you can be in the vehicle with of life and have your eyes closed and rest while they're driving. Who do you trust that much? Because this is what your life is right now as you're operating in your vehicle. Alright? And you want to be around people that you can close your eyes around. People that you can pray with. People you can meditate with. People you can rest with. People you can relax with. And not all of us have people we can completely relax around. Some people, some of us have people we got to be on edge with all the time. Alright? And that's letting spirit is letting you know I don't like this. Okay, so listen to spirit, you guys. Okay, and so spirit as within. Okay, but it helps you see as without. And so right now, Aquarius is helping you see the shifts and changes that are happening. Okay, and then Aquarius is helping you to make decisions. All right, Aquarius is also, like I say, dealing with the law of um, cause and effect. Right, and it's right across from the law of attraction. So what the cause and effect of things is based off of what you attract, you guys. Okay, and so that's why I say some people are attracting opportunities and beautiful things happening. Some people have attracted rebellious friends, haters, a lot of things that have gone against them. But it's also your shadows coming in to take from your light. So that's why I say the shadow work and your light work. What happens in the shadows can be so big that it can consume your light. Which is why some people don't enjoy their Leo season, Virgo season, whatever season. Your light is consumed by your karma and bad things or things you haven't confronted or taken care of. We have to address it. Also not having the courage to address certain things. That is what you're being graded by. So this is the university you are in school. You are being graded by your response to things spiritually. Okay? And so... The only thing, everything about you is going to die except for your spirit, right? Your body is very, very temporary. Your spirit is not. So that's why I say honor your spirit when things are happening. You can be a very smart person. You can be a very intellectual person. But there are times in your life where you're not going to have to use your intellect. You just got to trust what you feel and trust it the first time. All right? Sometimes you think long, you think wrong when it comes to your safety, when it comes to your success, when it comes to love, when it comes to your family. You ain't got to think that long when it comes to certain things. Trust yourself the first time. And so Aquarius is going to help you build into that because the next full moon is going to be a full moon in Pisces. And Pisces is going to be the biggest test of your faith, you know? So this is really just a walk through everything. The universe takes you through every sign. So you just want to trust it as it's taking place. And so I don't know what everybody else is saying about the full moon. They're not wrong. I'm just telling you what I'm going to say. And um, I'm just, it's not as surface as a lot of people make it. 
Okay, so this is your health in, um, in question. This is your mind. This is your spirit. All these things matter. All right. And so when it's about to go into Virgo season, a lot of people's health, whatever you haven't been taken care of and whatever's been going on in the shadows of your health and your body is going to come to surface. Okay, because the sun is going to shine light on things you haven't been paying attention to in the past few months. And so this is also goes back to unexpected changes with a lot of people's health. You have people still passing away from COVID. You have a whole lot of people just have a lot of things going on when it comes to their body. And a lot of people are ignoring things. Spirit is going to talk to you first, right? Through spirit, right? Then it's going to talk to you through your body. So that's why I say your chakras are connected to your body systems. So if your chakras are not um, aligned, right, and if your chakras are not cleared, then this is why things can affect your health and affect your body system. And this is why the body system is going to affect the body part. So this is why your leg will hurt, your head will hurt. Different things will happen, but it was a part of your chakra first. So that's why I say you want to just pay attention and listen to what spirit is saying so that you can really get everything you need to get. All right. Spirit never lied and everything you need to know, you need to know. You get the information. It's just do you listen and do you check your messages? So Aquarius is asking, do you check your messages? And now who else gets those messages? Because Aquarius is who I know and what I know. The information that I have and other people that had the information. The messages that I receive and other people that got those messages. That is your spiritual team. That is your group. That's your little gang. So we have to understand who our family is. And it's not always going to be people who look like us, which I say that all the time. Your family are people who think like you and people who look like you spiritually. Okay? People who have on the same spiritual uniform and move the same way naturally. Okay? And so a lot of people are stuck. All right, and loyal to our trauma because we want to be, um, that's our family, that's who this person is, and you go by what you see, conscious mind, but your subconscious mind is what's really driving the car, okay? And so that's why I understand your real vehicle, all right, and your real vehicle don't have eyes, all right? Or I would say your real driver does not have eyes, okay? So your real driver is just going by um, energy, and that's why I say a subconscious is reading things that you do not read. Subconscious picking up things you don't pick up on. So it's just like the masculine and feminine energy. The conscious, conscious mind is your masculine energy, but your subconscious mind is your feminine energy. And you want that as sharp as you need it to be. So that's why proper rest is very important. Meditation is very important. And that's why I say anything you do when you spend the time with your eyes closed is when your sight is the sharpest. Okay, not when your eyes are open because this world is not real and what you see is not real. And things can be a distraction to what's really happening. All right, your distractions and things that are really happening are going to be your biggest things when you come to Virgo season. So in the next few days when Virgo season comes up, now your clarity is going to be at a test. So that's why Aquarius season was so, I'm sorry, um, Aquarius, this Aquarius full moon was so important. And Leo season was showing you who was for you and who was against you. And you have to trust yourself the first time. All right, so that's why I say the Leo is the loyalty, the Leo is the faithfulness, the Leo is this is on my who's on my team, who stands for me, who's here for me, and Aquarius is the battle of finding out and using the discernment of who is not those things. All right, and figuring out who and what those things are is what's going to really help a lot of people, and it's not always people, these are habits sometimes. Sometimes your own worst enemy is things that you do, sometimes your own worst enemy is a personal thing, it's yourself. And so sometimes a lot of us, that's why I say the fight within, it makes it a fight without. Don't make other people fight your demons for you, all right? And I always say a lot of people think that fighting demons is a bad thing. The worst thing you could do is fuck your demons, marry your demons, give birth to your demons, work for your demons. That's the worst thing you could do. The best thing you could do is fight them because if you don't fight them, that's when you marry them. That's when you do other things with them. That's when they come in your life other ways. And so you have to fight them. And um, Aquarius and lower self can be a very bad demon that looks just like you and it looks just like a friendly person and they can be very amicable. So I'm not talking about Aquarius the sign. I'm saying what it represents in your life. It doesn't have to be an Aquarius. It's just showing what the sign is. And so when the sun and the moon come together, they're showing you things you needed to see, right? The sun is what you see, right? It's what's, what's being revealed, but the moon is what you feel. So when the sun and the moon come together, what you feel, your intuition, and what you need to see, the revelation of the sun, come together. So full moons are very emotional. However, these are revelations. It's what you needed to see, the good or the bad. So I would call the, re the full moon, as you're going through your journey in life, you guys, I would call your full moon... Um, I would say your, your checkpoint. I would call it your checkpoint in your navigation system. It's you just checking to see where you at. All right, so your full moon is just letting you know if you're in the right position or not. 
the full moon is letting you know if you've if you've arrived or if you're close, or the full moon is letting you know if you've you know detoured. And so that's why I say the full moon will expose things about people, uh, situations, wrong job, wrong house, wrong apartment, wrong contract, anything like that. All right, and you want to pay attention. Your awareness is very important right now, and details are important. Um, Venus is in Libra right now. Mercury is in um, Virgo. Mercury is gonna keep you sharp, sharper than sharp. Okay, honor it. And then Venus is gonna bring you that money through Libra. Honor it. However, why you not gonna get the money? Wherever you can't see it. Okay, wherever your sight is not good, it's gonna interrupt your money, your love is gonna interrupt opportunities, it's gonna interrupt all of that. And this is why I keep going back to this full moon in Aquarius is important. It's shining light on somebody or something that you felt wasn't right anyway. So now when your money gets interrupted and things get interrupted, you don't have to question who. So that's why the dates are very important about when you do certain things and who you're around, different events. We don't think about it. We live day to day. But this is why I give you the numerology of the day, you guys, because the day to day actually matters too. The math maths. Okay, with the universe, the math maths. It, it, there's no not mathing over here. It maths. Everything matters. So every day that something happens, it matters two weeks from now. It matters three days from now. Who you was around, it matters. Okay, so the alignment of the planets don't lie about something that's happening and something that's taking place and who you are around. It doesn't lie about good things that's taking place. It's not always anything necessarily bad. So you can even, like I say, the master of your life, you're going to plan around your planets. Okay, you're planning with the planets. All right, you having a meeting with the planets about the next thing you're going to do in the next month or so, six months from now, two weeks from now. It's an amazing thing, all right? So, peace and love, um, Wisdom Born. Peace and love, Monique. Peace and love, you guys. Peace and love, Lala. Peace and love, y'all. I haven't been on here in so long. I miss y'all. I miss everybody. It's good to see y'all's names. Peace and love, Dwayne. Peace and love, Sakina. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love. I just be rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> and I was trying not to get on here too late anyway. Because um, peace and love to my Aunt Beverly. It was her birthday. And I had she we were at her birthday party. And I didn't know what time it was going to be when I got home. And I was like, I hadn't went live in so long. But I did want to get into this. Because um, it is, you know, with the blue moon and everything. You don't always get two full moons in the same um, month. So I just thought that was so fantastic. And so, and it was... That was a double warning, or I would say there were double gifts for some people. Because the full moon you're receiving, or like I say, the full moon you either get in a goodie bag, or you going back in the corner. Some people, like I say, their full moons are not comfortable. So your full moon can be uncomfortable to where you're in the corner, meaning you're receiving some bad karma, some bad news, something didn't go in your favor. And I don't even want to say bad, because things that don't go in your favor is for a reason anyway. However, there are some people who got a goodie bag from the universe, all right? So the sun and the moon, mom and daddy came together and decided you got this because the past couple of weeks, the past few months, you've been doing this. And that's why I call it a report card. However, the full moon for some people, mom and daddy came together and decided you don't get nothing because the past few months you've been doing this. So it's character building. And so I try not to spend so much time in my clients' readings talking about what other people do or what other people might be doing because it's not always about other people. A lot of times it's about what you do and what you allow. Your shadow work is what do I need to stop doing or where do, what do I need to strengthen? So if it's not always something that you do, what is somebody else doing to me or what do other people do to me that I need to strengthen myself in a certain area so they don't feel so comfortable right here. So that's why I say your shadow work is furniture moving. Because I need to move so much furniture and do so much rearranging in my life that people are not as comfortable anymore. And when they come into my space, they're bumping into shit. Meaning nothing about me is the same anymore. And a lot of us don't move enough furniture and a lot of us don't change things enough. And so that's why I say it's not always about other people. It's one thing when people are crossing your boundaries, but it's another thing when the boundaries was never there. Okay? And so a lot of, a lot of us be like, oh, people be disrespecting me. But how do we know what to disrespect? What, where was the rule? You know, it's one thing, like I say, if you have a rule and I broke your rule, but if, where, if you never had a rule, I'm not breaking your boundaries. You just don't respect yourself. And people are only going to give you what you give yourself, and we only give people what we give ourselves. Okay? So if you disrespect yourself, I got a lot of it too. Me too. Me too. And everybody else too. It's, it's, it's just, we have to realize what we are allowing people to do in our life. 
And so and we also have to know what bus we're getting on when it comes to our purpose. And so if you don't miss your bus, you don't have to be, worry about being with the wrong people. And a lot of times we miss our opportunities, we miss our bus, we miss great things that can go in our space because of the people we have around us. And we don't know how to detach. Okay? And so detachment is a thing. All right? Stay neutral to everything that's happening when you're involved in things, and it helps you get further ahead. When we stay in experiences and emotions, it keeps you lower and lower, and it keeps you heavy. So you want to pack, and you want to pack light, or not anything. You want to be completely naked in your journey so you're not carrying anything. And a lot of us have so much shit, so that we claim we don't have friends, we don't have a man, we don't have that. You don't have a lot of stuff because you don't love yourself, and you're carrying around a lot of stuff, and nobody wants to help you unpack it. That's just that. And me too. All of us. You know what I mean? So be honest with yourself about where you at. And, you know, be wrong to be right. And I feel like with this full, full moon, I feel, I feel like I feel like with this full moon, especially it being two in the same month, that's why I say the universe was showing you something more than once about something, about a person, you know, more than once that this is about to happen, more than once that this is going to take place. So now I say just take heed. Um, a lot of introverts are coming out a little bit more in the past month, too. And so that's why I say it might have been a little bit of disharmonious for people with a lot of water placements. Because a lot of people with a lot of water placements was probably crying, feeling stuff all over the place. Because you had a whole lot of um, fire signs, all right, getting rid of stuff, exerting energy. You had a whole lot of um, uh, earth signs getting rid of energy, okay? And so you have a lot of water signs shifting right because they're feeling the other the aftermath of a lot of things so a lot of water signs were taking in a whole lot of stuff crying upset not gonna be the same just um talking about the things that they're not gonna put up with anymore because they're hearing other people's stuff but it's also they're ridding their self of stuff and so a lot of um water signs just really really been probably hoarding in a lot of people's stuff the retrograde also is locking the door to a lot of things so a lot of people feel like they can't escape their own thoughts a lot of people are not being able to um, rest at night a lot of people's diets have shifted but not necessarily in a good way a lot of people were probably very healthy before and started eating a lot of bullshit lately um, being at different um, fast foods and all of that because that goes back to your energy change and a lot of people's motivation change and a lot of those things happen so a lot of people are not eating the same way and a lot of people are not moving the same way that they used to move and that's why I say um, you definitely want to make sure that you're taking care of a lot of different things when it comes to your body. Because when your chakras are off, everything starts to go off. And so um, being able to take in with your spiritual connection at your crown and being able to see everything you need to see at your third eye. Now, you have to be ready at your third eye, which a lot of people are not. So this is why a lot of people start tripping. They start getting therapy. And it's not saying that we don't need therapy. And it's not saying that our mental health isn't important. But sometimes you're taking a hit to your mental health sometimes because you don't have proper spiritual health. And that's important. Okay? Your spiritual health is important because you'll be connected, right? And it's like your phone line is on and somebody's talking and you're getting connections and you're getting all types of messages that you don't know what to do with. It's like sitting at somebody else's desk and somebody else's office and getting somebody else's calls and you're getting overwhelmed. Okay? And so this is why a lot of us think we're losing our mind when you're really gaining your God. And I'm going to say that again. A lot of us think we're losing our mind when you're really gaining your God. So you have to understand when God is coming through. Okay? But you also do have to understand when dark, low-frequency energies are coming through. And so you have to discern this. So if you don't meditate enough, if you don't pray enough, you don't understand when you're paranoid or when the Spirit is really telling you something. And I'm saying that because a lot of us really don't have a discernment sometimes of when Spirit is saying something and when our triggers are saying something. It is a really big difference. And you really have to know that. Okay? And our triggers talk to us completely different. And so a lot of us move in survival mode in a lot of situations and think we're under a threat when we're not. And a lot of us respond in a lot of situations and think we're under a threat and we're under some type of harm and we're not. And so that's why I say your mind, your body, and your spirit got to be on the same team. And a lot of us sometimes I don't always have it all on the same team. You're feeding your body every day. You're even having sex. You're feeding the flesh, right? You're not, not making no time for the spirit and not creating a proper space for your mind. So they're not aligned, which is why we'll be in a lot of situations. And the spirit is saying one thing and the mind is saying something else. And I'm going to tell you right now, the spirit knows more. The spirit sees more. And the spirit been here longer. The spirit never left. 
And so a lot of us um, will crunch numbers all day and be in the head. So your anxiety and your nervousness and all of that, the logic and the reasoning of a situation, you're trying to break it down all day. But that's telling the divine that you don't trust. And that's telling the divine that I don't think you're moving fast enough. And that's telling the divine that I don't think you're doing it a certain way when you're in your head so much. Your intellect is important. Your intellect is very fruitful. Your intellect is a very beautiful part of you. But your intellect is not what's going to get you through. Your spirit is. How you breathe is. Which is why there are a lot of foolish people who are getting a lot long f further than a lot of us, right? And they're a lot happier, right? Because they're breathing right. And that's all that really matters, okay? And so that's why I say it's not about the things outside of you. It's about things that's inside of you. And the things outside of you look so much better. And so we all have to understand that. So as within is our spirit, so without is our environment. As um, above is our mind, but as so below is our bodies. They all have to communicate properly for you to really elevate, okay? And so a lot of us, that's what I'm saying, are not having the proper conversations. And so you're hearing, hearing things from your past and you're hearing your demons talk. And that's why I say, and if you don't fight your demons, you're going to end up, what? Like I said, fucking them. You're going to end up working for them. You're going to end up having their ch child, okay? You're going to end up living beside them. You're going to end up with them all the time. They're going to be your mama. They're going to be your daddy. If you don't fight them, they're going to end up in your life some type of way, okay? You're going to end up hiring them. They're going to be working for you. They're going to be your best friend. You have to fight your demons or they're going to be sitting beside you all the time. And they're going to keep manifesting and they're going to keep on trying to take the elevator to where you're trying to go. And they're going to keep trying to get there. And you're going to keep trying to figure out why you're doing so many beautiful, wonderful things. And you don't mean anybody no harm, but why everybody won't smoke with you. Because you don't know how to fight. Okay? And so that's why I say we so want to be real niggas out here. Don't be a real nigga. Be a real guy. Because real niggas can't really fight. Okay, and so that's why I'm saying real niggas don't understand that the first fight and the first war is spiritual first. It has nothing to do with the flesh. Okay, and so that's why I say please understand that. And I'm telling you that so Aquarius creates the changes in our life. Create, see, Aquarius creates the changes for our children. Okay, so Aquarius has a whole lot to do with us elevating and going to another elevator. And like I always say, your elevator don't come down unless you're coming to get somebody else. Unless you come to save somebody else. As you elevate, the elevator continues to go up. And you're going to continue to do well. But you have to understand the worst part of you. And so Aquarius can be the worst part of us. The higher that the sign is, the worst part of it, the worse it is in lower self. So Aquarius, Pisces are very high signs. They're horrible in lower self, okay? And so we have to be able to fight that. That's why the, the more we go into the signs, the worse the aftermath is and the worse that the shadow work is because the, the more divine you're getting, okay? And so that's why I say this Aquarius full moon was just a beautiful thing and it was here to dress us up, okay? And Aquarius deals with clothes. All the air signs deal with clothes. All the signs deal with food, clothes, shelter, or life, all right? And so like Aries is a sign that deals with life. Okay, but uh, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, those signs dress you up because they use your words, your literature, the things that you know. And this is what other people understand what your vibration looks like and people use your aura, all right, and they utilize you based off of what you're bringing to the table. And so because they dress up your aura, those signs, Aquarius has a lot to do with your aura. You don't know what your aura looks like until you know the people around you and the people that you're attracting into your space. You don't know if you're in higher self or lower self until you look in your environment. So that's why you always have to look without. Okay? All right? And anytime you're questioning what's without, you have to go right back in. Because what's without is your conscious mind. What is within is your subconscious mind. Okay? And so that's why I say the prayer and the meditation will change what you see outside of you. Right? And so, but sometimes what's going on outside of you can change what's going on inside of you. So this is why sometimes you have to change your environment. Sometimes you have to just change what's going on, what's inspiring, or I would say um, influencing your spirit. All is well. But um, Aquarius right now, um, with Uranus, is his ruling sign is in Taurus. So it has, like I said, it goes back to security, your value. It's talking about how much you cost. It's talking about what you bring to the table. So this is talking about people who bring you money and people who help you accent. And um, I would say... Um, dress up who you are a little bit more okay so people who enhance you that's the word I'm looking for enhancement okay so the people who en enhance you in the shadows are people who take away and strip away from you and so this is why we have to face people who strip us so we can get to the people who clothe us 
my goodness. And we have to know who is who. And so that's why I say a lot of people don't detach properly. And this is why we'll stay in situations. A lot of us are scared. And a lot of us are more loyal to other people than we are to ourselves. Okay? You've been knowing you longer than you've been knowing anybody. And if there's anybody that you've been knowing um, longer than you've been knowing yourself, you in a fucked up space. Because you shouldn't be knowing nobody longer, than, longer and more than you know yourself. Okay, and that's why your loyalty is to you first, because when you honor you, it helps you be better to other people when you're good to you. And you give people what you give yourself. And so when we're not good to ourselves, we have good to other people. So don't give people time, money, and energy or anything else that you don't have to really give, because it's not really going to come from a true place. It's not coming from a real place. Okay? And you're going to beat yourself up about it later. And you might even have to suffer later about what you gave somebody that you didn't really have. So let it come from a real place. And that is our first commandment. Do not put any other God before you. You put your God, you, okay? That is the first thing. And then your second commandment is you don't put things before people, okay? You put people before things. And so a lot of people live their life different ways. And so you, astrology is just way deeper than a lot of people bring into the situation. And it's just crazy when, when, when I hear people talking about it. And this is no shade to anybody, but know what you're talking about and know your life. And I did not choose astrology at all. And this is not what I asked for. But if you're going to do it, do it. Okay? And so that's why I was like, I see a lot of stuff on TikTok and I seen a lot of stuff on um, Instagram. And a lot of people are just playing around. And y'all got, y'all, not y'all, there are people that are really, it's a lot of people that's really following a lot of people. And do not even understand the depths of what they're talking about and the direction that some people are going to send you in, okay? And that's why I always urge my clients and anybody, understand your own chart. I will talk to you about your chart, but understand your own chart, okay? Don't trust me. Don't trust nobody. Trust yourself, all right? Trust yourself, and you'll hear yourself outside of yourself. If I sound like you, yeah, come to me. If I sound like you, we have the same type of mind, then yeah. But don't just come to me. Don't just go. Just don't, don't just be going to people, you guys. You're going to get misled. You're going to miss your bus, okay? Trust yourself first. Learn your own chart and then discuss your chart with other people, you know, or with people that you trust or people who are educated in that. Do not just be letting other people read your chart. So I have been slowly but surely teaching my clients their chart as I'm doing their chart at the same time, simultaneously at the same time. I want them to trust them first, and then they can trust me. So I always tell people, trust yourself first. Trust yourself first with everything. So new people, new situations, and shifts with that Aquarius moon. So that's why I'm saying that. New clients. I have clients who went other places, but I've gotten new clients. It's okay. A lot of people's energy are changing. You're onto something else. That's okay. So that's what I mean. Like, be able to be open. You can't get nothing new until you get rid of something old. Right? All right, and you can't get something new until you do something new, right? So love, business, and everything. Don't be afraid of something different. And so a lot of people, because it's also affecting your heart chakra with this um, Aquarius moon. So wherever you're open at, wherever there's um, a level of tolerance to something, and that's not saying wherever there's a level of adjustment to something, where you can change your clothes fast to a situation, yeah, this Aquarius moon is going to work for you. And also Uranus, I believe, just started retrograding. And so things going back. So that means um, your, your ability to change, and I would say your originality and those things sometimes, with that Uranus gone retrograding, seems like things are going back further than they want, you want them to be. So they'll be very uncomfortable. The people need to pay attention to their money. Money is about to change in general for the whole world. Um, the way they hold up um, a lot of the things when it comes to our finances, our assets, and our materials. Those things are about to change, so just pay attention to that. Take your time with your money right now. Um, and I would definitely say that. Anybody that's connected to anybody else, as far as their finances, you want to pay attention to that all month. If there's anything backhanded or anybody who got something dirty going on, if you're tied to anybody, I don't care if it's your spouse, your business partner, anybody. Mark my words, pay attention between now and September 10th, you guys, as your, your finances, your money, your contracts, if you're in school or anything like that, pay attention because things could change. And like I, said, I just said that, your money's going to change because your rain is retrograding, you guys. So hold on to your money right now. And when Venus was in, um, when Venus was in Virgo, the universe was already telling you to slow down on your money. Venus in Libra is amazing. However, the shadow work of Venus being in Libra is not very fun. 
Okay, so this is potential theft. This is potential dishonesty. This is potential um, betrayal. A lot of things like that is a shadow work of the Venus and Libra. So the Venus and Libra is harmonious money, money coming to you easy, money coming to you naturally. This is people falling in love, people being in relationships, and all of that naturally between now and September 10th. But also in the shadows, whatever you didn't pay attention to, and Mercury is telling you to look at the details right now because it's in Virgo. If you don't do it, yeah, yeah. And that's why I say unexpected changes. A lot of people might be spending like crazy and then your business bombs in the next couple of months or you lose your job in the next couple of months. You have to pay attention to the signs. And that sounds so cliche. Literally, you have to pay attention to the signs, the zodiac signs and the signs of your life. They literally are telling you what's taking place, which is why I always say it like you're in your body. I mean, in your vehicle, which is your body. Pay attention to the signs. Virgo was already saying, hey, if you go to speed limit, all right, the money is real. The partnerships are real. If you look at everything thoroughly, everything that you're touching and everybody you're meeting right now is real. Wherever you have not paid attention, all right, and wherever you've been rubbernecking at, you about to run into a lot of phony, fake people who look like they look good, they look like money, they look successful, they sound right, they 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 look the part, they full of shit. Okay, because Neptune is retrograding as well. Neptune brings you the magic. Neptune, Neptune just makes everything nice and good, cushiony and just makes it just out of this world believable. You just cannot believe how enchanting Neptune can just make a situation. It is retrograding right now. It's ugly. Somebody done pulled the mask off the situation. Trust yourself. Mercury is in Virgo. I keep saying that. That is like your spiritual glasses. Mercury in Virgo is the exaltation. That is the sharpest your mind is going to be for the next few weeks. Use it because it's going to retrograde in another few weeks. I'm telling you that, you guys. Like, it's just like you haven't, you're just like going to the spiritual eye doctor with Mercury and Virgo right now. You can't miss shit. There's nothing you can miss right now. And if you miss it, that's either how dumb you are, how foolish you are, or how much shadow work you have not done, anything you needed to see for the next few weeks. All right? Even though, even with Neptune retrograding, you cannot miss it. Okay? So, trust me. <laughs> Don't trust me, trust you. And if you trust you, then what I'm saying will align with you. Because I don't like telling people to trust me. I just like to tell people to trust their self. Because that's what's most important right now. Um, so I would just say that. So just pay attention to your money, assets, anything like that. If you're selling a house, a car, you're thinking about buying a house, buying a car, anything like that. Look at the fine print right now. Mercury is your best friend right now and mercury is really going to be your best friend when it retrogrades because wherever you miss the spot at when mercury retrogrades you're going to be thanking the stars you're going to be thanking the fucking stars i promise you okay the planets are working for you so even when things do not go in your benefit that's the, you was a slave that day okay because you didn't do the work Every time things work for you and you execute your plans, you are the master. And that's why I say I try to keep everybody and my, my clients in a master position because the master is always saying, say no more, which I say that, right? The, the slave is always saying, why me? Do not be the slave. You don't want to say, why me? You don't want the universe to shift on you. You want to create the shifts yourself. You want to be the master of your own life. And so you want to be, you want to show up on time for your own life. You are the time of your own life. Do not waste you, okay? Because you can't waste time. It's not real. Don't waste yourself. And that's why I say it's a certain way you do things so you can execute and just complete things, right? And that's why a lot of people can sit with their feet up, right? Because they've executed their life. They've made their life a certain way. And some people are just letting the wind blow them, right? Some people are just blowing in the wind. And they're just like the air signs in lower self. You're just all over the place. You want to work in some earth here. The, the universe has given us some earth here. Uh, let me see here. You have Mercury in Virgo. Mercury. Mars is in Virgo. Oh my goodness. You see what I'm saying? Mars is in Virgo. You got Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto is retrograding, but those are earth signs that are being utilized right now. That's helping you pin things to the ground. Uranus is in Taurus. That's also an earth sign, but that's retrograding right now. So those are signs where right now those are earth signs that's saying, hey, look down. Anytime you're dealing with the earth sign, you're looking down. You're looking at the details. You're looking at the logic. Does it make sense? Can I touch it? Earth signs need to, they need proof. Okay? A Taurus, a Virgo, and a Capricorn, you got to put it in their hand right now, today, where they don't trust you. You need to tell them what page is on right now. They don't trust you. They need to taste it themselves or they don't touch, they don't trust you. Okay? Earth signs need tangible things to understand what the hell is going on. 
And if you can't tell them right now, tell them what store to go get it from or where it's at or what is where it's at on Amazon, they don't believe you. Okay? So that's why you have to be able to talk to every sign right now. The universe is telling you to look down. That means some money is about to come your way. That's the only time it's telling you to look down. We have to make sense of things. We have to look at our resources. And so that's why Pluto is telling you to look at your resources. So Sun and Scorpio can be fun. It's not necessarily always fun. Sun is already that's a challenge. However, it can be fun for you. You can work, make it work for you if you could already work on your shadow work where Pluto is retrograding right now. Now, so that's why I say you can do things ahead of time. Use their time wisely when it comes to your life. Don't just show up. You know, a lot of times we just show up. We just walking around just like winging it when we actually have a whole script in this situation. So, you know, utilize your tools. We're very powerful. We are very, very powerful. Things can really go the way we want it to go. And that's why I always say it's like a band. If everybody sings their part, you know, and or everybody plays their part right, everything works out a certain way. There are no uh, changes. There are no bad changes. There are no problems. But because a lot of people are not into astrology, don't trust astrology, don't believe in it, which I don't believe in astrology either. Astrology is not something you need to believe in. Astrology is Astrology is before you. Astrology is after you. Astrology don't need belief. Astrology going to be here. Period. So I don't believe in astrology. Astrology is, do you know math? Do you know science? Okay? Because earth is earthing. And the sun is sunning. And you, do, you can't argue with those. <laughs> Water is watering. Now the planets are planeting. So those are things we can't argue with. And those things were happening before we got here. And so we have to understand as people, last hired, first fired. So, you know what? Uh, the animals and everything can thrive without us. And so that's why we have to understand that we're at the top of the food chain, but we're at the lowest uh, spiritually. We don't matter as much, okay? And so they can thrive without us. So that's why it's a certain things that we have to do to operate here, all right? Because when we even talk about the creation, man was, man was last, all right? And so that's why we have to understand that the way we were created last, okay, so last you got to go back with, all the way back to the stars. So that's why who, who, who runs the show? <laughs> the stars. The sun. The planet. Okay? He was the last, he was the last hired. That's what I'm saying. So we fired. <laughs> and so um, we, we, can get, we can get taken care of first. We can get up out of here first. And the stars and the sun and the moon and everything can still be here. So that's why I say we have to use our intellect and honor the fact that we have something our ability to create, our ability to understand, our ability to create changes, all of that, you know, we have that. And we don't want to use it. And so that's why a lot of us, we are in the situations we are in. And so the stars tell you a lot. Our ancestors use the stars, okay? The sky's not here for no reason. They're telling us everything we need to see. And so just understand your science, understand your math, understand yourself so that you can get everything you need to get. So now with this Aquarius um, full moon, the next few days when the moon starts to wane, we need to do things for other people, right? So when you're at the full moon, you're receiving things. You got your gift. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Daddy, Sun and Moon. Okay? They start to wane. You start to hand things over. So what you do at a waning moon is no different, honestly, what you do when the moon is waxing gibbous. You are doing the same thing. You're giving things away. You're reducing. You're cutting things down. You're refining things. So you don't need as much weight. All right? So the moon is getting lighter now. Right? So you don't need as much. So that's why you give things away. You hand things away. You um, become a what we call a blessing or a bliss into somebody else's life when the moon starts to wane. So that's to say that there's an understanding between you and the sun and the moon. That there's an understanding of what just happened the past few days. Now I'm going to do something for somebody else. And so the most challenging times, whenever the moon is in the first quarter or the third quarter, okay, between the new moon and the first, um, the new moon and the first quarter is when it's very, very dark. And this is why when it's the darkest is when you try to manifest something. This is when you try to do your ritual. So when this um, new moon in Virgo comes up soon, you guys, this is when you can try to manifest and talk about what you want as far as your health, which is what Virgo represents. You want to talk about your routine, your schedule, the things that can go for you. And it's going to be setting you up for the next six months. So that's why you're looking at the things that have taken place in the past six months. And you're saying, you know what, I think I need a little bit more structure. I need a little bit more order. I need a little bit more organization. 
I need to quit smoking. I need to quit drinking. Whatever it is pertaining to your health and your regular routine and how your life is going on, you need to think about that. If you need a service dog, just simple things, whatever it is that you need to make your life easier, your new moon should be required. I mean, I'm sorry, moving around that as far as your new moon in Virgo. Because the sun, the sun is slowly getting there, so now you're starting to get your grocery list together again when it comes to universe. So that's why I say when you're talking about... Um, what you want, what you're asking for. I just call it a grocery list. Write it down and be very specific. And check your list and check it twice. And you start seeing some of the things manifest over six months worth. So that's why that full moon is the last of six months worth. You know, I hope, hopefully I'm explaining that right. Um, because right now, like I said, if it's the full moon in Aquarius, that means the new moon in Aquarius was back in February, if you understand that. So that's what I'm saying. That was months ago. So this is why this full moon, you're on a receive mode of... What you, if you even did anything, if you didn't do a ritual, this is why that's why I'm saying you're just winging it through life. If you didn't do a ritual, you didn't ask for anything, or however, back in February, you're just winging it right now, and that's fine too. And this is why we learn, right? And but people who already did a ritual, you knew what you asked for, you knew what you wanted as far as friends, you know what your plan was for your life. That's why a lot of people are on time. That's why I say they didn't miss their bus as far as their alignment this, um, for this full moon. A lot of people are like, boom. I marketed my business, I did this, this, and that, I had an event. Like some people are just so on time, everything just happened back to back to back to them for this month. Some people got proposed to, they had the baby they wanted, like they did everything they said they was going to do. Boom, boom, boom. So you are so powerful, that's what I'm saying. Give the universe a list of things. The universe loves you. The universe, you don't pay your bills. You don't pay your bills, you never did, you never will. The universe pays your bills. So when you think like that, when it's just things that you want, because the guy will never let anything happen that wasn't supposed to happen. So that's why I'm saying you actually never paid your bills before. You just use your will to pay your bills. God made it possible, or the universe, or your higher God self made it possible. The lower self could care less if your bills get paid, right? <clears throat> but you've used your will to make sure it happened. So the will is everything, which is your strength and your desire to cling on to something. And so that's why I say use your will your strength and um this full moon was opposing that so wherever you didn't have strength at this full moon like i said was uncomfortable for some people in situations where you needed it wherever you didn't have your will your strength wherever you um wasn't expressive wherever you didn't beep your horn and spiritual traffic is something that needed to be said wherever your throat chakra is just all the way clogged up you know in the past few days yeah this is why you're on the other end of that spiritual accident and something happened in traffic. And you, that's why you was held up in traffic in your life the past few days because it's things that you didn't say, things you didn't do, what areas you weren't motivated, or your solar plexus didn't have enough power. But like I say, people who are dancing, twerking, having a good time, celebrating, which is what Leo season is about, celebrations and having a good time. Everybody that was on the receiving end of that, yeah, I used my will, which is why Aquarius worked for me. So certain signs work for you depending on what other signs are aspecting it. They, they all work together or against each other in different ways. Um, moving forward, we all stay the most grounded all right, with these earth signs. So with this Mercury and Virgo, look at the details. If you have a little lump on your throat, your ear been bothering you, you've been having consistent headaches, look at it now. What's small is big. The small stuff is the big stuff. For me in my life, and when I say when it comes to astrology, because whatever you dismiss now is going to be something you wouldn't, you wish you wouldn't have dismissed later. So when it comes to your health or anything like that, the smaller stuff. When it comes to your children's behaviors and things like that, what is small now is going to be big later. Don't let little man man do this and do that and the way that they eat and the way that they behave and then question why you're bailing them out later. And questioning why he why he robbing me ten years later. Okay, <laughs> don't question certain things. So pay attention because Virgo is definitely saying everything that needs to go on a microscope, put it under there today, right? Because it's gonna get bigger if you don't, and it's gonna get bad. So whatever you don't, remember the opposite of Virgo is Pisces. Pisces is stuff. It's not even small stuff. Pisces, you can't see it, smell it, hear it. Pisces in lower self is like a gas that can take you out of here because it has no shape. It has no smell, no form, right? And so um, Pisces is something that's not even, you can't even put it under the microscope. So that's why Virgo says, hey, look at what you can see because later if you can't see it in Pisces, it's going to tear, tear away at you later. So these are people who die with like diseases that wasn't even detectable and things like that. Um, all of this, uh, Pisces are also people. 
Okay, people that are not detectable, they ain't smell wrong. Some of everything about them seemed right. It didn't seem like nothing was wrong with them because those are also very sneaky people. You can't detect them. You can't smell them. You can't see them. They don't have no taste. So, and nothing about them. They don't have no odor. You're just like, hmm. Right? So you want to pay attention to people like that too. Something about them is just so magical. They just get around everything. But that's also, that's why I say how they move throughout your life. So remember, Pisces represents your lymphatic system. So it's a lot of things that be going on, you know, for a long time that you don't understand and you don't know about that's like deep, deep in your body that you're not aware of. So that's why I say that. So the people, the things when it comes to your health, and like I say, Pisces is a part of your third eye and your crown chakra. So internally, what you don't, um, what you need to see, which is why sometimes people can just close their eyes and can tell something is wrong. They can just tell that they're sick. They can tell they got a cold. They can tell their body is not the same. Their third eye is activated. Their third eye is even telling them, which is why people be like, I think I got this. And that's why I say it's the difference between being paranoid and having a trigger and then when spirit is talking to you. If you are not a healed person, you're going to always be triggered. You're going to always be paranoid and you're not going to be able to discern. And so that's why I say being able to heal, talk through things, understanding and learning yourself about what bothers you, understanding and learning yourself about what was a health problem your whole life, and understanding if something manifested in the past couple of years because of somebody you connected to. It's completely different of knowing, hey, I've had this my whole life, and all of a sudden I got this. Yeah, who would you tie to? Like, you have to think about that. Just like when you go to the doctor, when something goes down in your life, when you get sick, when things happen, the first thing that I would ask you as a reader, just the way your doctor would, well, who was the last person you was around? Where you been the past couple of weeks? Because spiritually, somebody done got you sick. So if this is not your normal day-to-day, -day, and if I have your birth chart and I know your life, there's somebody or something that has happened that you've recently been in contact with that's making you feel a certain way. And we have to think about that, too. Who you have sex with and all of that. These one-night stands, and then you wonder why you're in the house crying for two weeks straight, and you can't even remember that you slept with that one guy or that one girl, and now you, your money is messed up, all right? Venus is talking about your money, but Venus is also talking about your lover. So you have to think that they tie in together. So that your money can get interrupted, your opportunities can get interrupted by who you're sleeping with, by who you're messing with. And you don't understand what somebody else's heaviness is in their life, and it comes into your life. And that's what I'm saying. And when that lightning strikes, the universe don't know. Just like when your mom come in, I'm, I'm, pop, I'm whooping whoever in here. The universe don't care. I'm, I'm popping whoever in here. And so if you with somebody who owes the universe and is in spiritual debt, your ass is in debt. So you think about who you marry, who you do business with, because that's still a marriage, uh, any of those things. Because then now what's theirs is yours. And so that's why it's important to scan people spiritually, which I'm saying that one last time, that Mercury is in Virgo, which is telling you to scan people and things. Scan yourself first because rent is due on the first, so you pay yourself first. You pay yourself the most attention. So you pay it to you first. You also owe self first. So whenever there's a problem, you always check self first. And if it's not you, your health or anything like that, now we go outside of ourselves. Okay, I always check self first because like I say, the spirit and the universe and the, the zodiac in general is character building. It's what are you, it's uh, what do you need to work on. Because even if somebody is completely doing you wrong and, and just dragging you through life, why are you still holding on, why are you holding a hand? Why do they know where you at? Why are you allowing it to happen? You see how it's still low key your fault and it's not victim blaming. Okay, and this is not to gaslight or confuse anybody, but we all pay, play some type of part in our own pain sometimes. And then we be loyal to the pain. And, all right, and then we want to play the game because then we get bored when we're peaceful. All right? Peace is going to be bored sometimes. And a lot of people do not understand that. Some people, we are so used to drama and so much stuff going on that when we don't have nothing going on, we consider that being bored. That's what peace looks like. That's what peace looked like with your damn hood ass. And that's, I'm talking about all of us. We be so used to that shit. And then we don't have nothing else going on. We be like, man, I must be a boring person. That's called peace. That's called peace. Enjoy it. Try it. You'll like it. It's great. Okay? And a lot of us don't like it. And a lot of us are not used to it. So a lot of people try to cause conflict in so many weird ways. Because they're not comfortable with nothing going on. Understand what your peace look like, which I always say that. So you'll understand and, and see it the first time what conflict, what war, and what destruction look like. You don't have to question when somebody's fucking with you. You don't have to question it. Okay? You don't got to question any of those things when you know what your peace look like. But people who have never experienced their peace, they have never met their peace, they always at war. 
right? And they can't even tell if somebody's messing with them or if, if they're doing something to somebody else because they never even, they don't even know whose is whose. They're so confused. But once you have one good taste of your piece, and that's what I'm saying, that thing's seasoned right and it's done right and it's cooked right, you know, in the middle, mm, right? You don't want nobody messing with your piece, okay? And you know what to fight for. So fighting and, um, and peace is always going to be, they're going to coexist all the time, just like love and hate. It's going to coexist. So just because you're peaceful doesn't mean you're not going to keep fighting either. You want to stay in that position, you're going to have to fight. And a lot of people don't understand that, that works together. <laughs> There's no love with no war. Okay? And so preparation is key. Um, awareness is everything. Alright? Yes, it's the peace for me too because I must be boring. Um, I must have a boring life, but I'm okay with that because ain't nobody calling my phone I don't want no smoke with nobody. Don't nobody want no smoke with me. I'm over here chilling, living my best life with me and my children. You know, and so all is well. And, you know, and I, and I know what a life full of drama looks like. So there's no shade to anybody um, who might still be going through things. Because I used to hoot, holler, you know, be on the phone texting somebody for hours. That whole shit, my whole day be gone. Going back and forth with people and doing all that and trying to have the last word. And just honestly letting my ego have more of a voice than it should have had. All right? And not that the ego is wrong and we don't throw our ego away, but I let my ego have a mic way too many times. And so, look, I had to learn how to take the mic from my ego. And, um, and ego works for you sometimes. We just have to discern when ego can show up. All right? Ego does not hurt us, okay? But ego don't have to show up for everything. And I think that that's the thing for us. And a lot of us have lost so many fights and so many wars that a lot of us just ain't going to take no shit no more. And that goes back to knowing when something or somebody really is violating you and when you really are in an unsafe place. And knowing when you just being triggered. And a lot of us will think that we are um, in, a, in a place of threat when we really we're just being triggered. And that's why I'm saying. And as a people, as a people, we naturally will overreact. And just to let somebody know we don't play. And, <laughs> you know, because we don't want to experience some type of violation we've already experienced before. So that's why I say the pause is the most powerful thing. I did um, a video on TikTok talking about that, how powerful the pause of seeing the difference of when somebody is really trying to violate you, intention and ignorance. Ignorance and intent is a powerful, powerful thing. And so knowing the difference will let you know how to respond. And a lot of us don't know how to respond because that's what I'm saying. We still triggered from the last time somebody fucked with us. And so now somebody who ain't even trying to do something, we about to get them all the smoke. And it don't even be that necessary. It be the wrong time, wrong place. That's what, that's what um, being unhealed does to us. You know, and that's what trauma does to us. And that's fine too. We just, we just have to understand that and go through that process. But um, understand your strengths, understand your power. I am going to go do the live. Um, like I said, I can't go live on TikTok yet because I don't have enough followers yet. You have to have a certain amount of followers. And um, so I'll be going back on here, going live. Anybody who wants to follow me on TikTok, you're more than welcome to. I'm starting to upload stuff on my YouTube again. I haven't really like been on my YouTube like that either. Um, I kind of just been like enjoying my little vacation I've been having with my children and kind of like vibing. I've still been doing readings, just not on social media as much, but I miss social media. I just got so used to not being on social media like that, like I got too comfortable. And I was like, oh shoot, like I forgot I'd be on Facebook like that. So um, I'm going to start just getting back on Facebook, but um, anybody who's interested in a personal session, reach out to me. Um, I know people have inbox and they keep asking about me going through every sign and I could have all the time I've been talking and I didn't go through every sign. I will do a video going through every sign um, on the live because people want to be able to go through every sign, um, especially like with the full moons and everything. So we'll get back into doing that. But I'm about to go because I don't want my phone to die on you guys, but it has been amazing being back on Facebook and doing this live. I really wanted to make sure I jumped in and did this live today, regardless of how live, um, how late it was going to be. And I'm glad I did. I saw a bunch of names that I have not seen. Jermaine, uh, that I have not seen in a long time. Hey, Donnell. Oh, peace and love, Jacqueline. I'm so glad to see you on here. I'm glad you're doing okay. Shanta. Man, like, Wisdom Born, oh, I saw you. Man, I just love even seeing y'all's names. Like, 
I'm so I'm a cancer monitor. I will cry. Like I be all like, oh, I haven't seen everybody in so long. But um, yeah, I will definitely be going back live again. Um, just more often and everything. I really do miss you guys, and I miss going live and just. I was looking at some of my old videos, and I remember just I used to go live like all the time and be like, peace and love, and I just you know you change, you grow, you just things are not always going to be the same, but um. The love on Facebook and seeing y'all's name and support. Y'all are just so dope. I love y'all and peace and love to y'all. And have a good night. And I'm just happy to be back on Facebook and be showing y'all some love and be sharing some information. So y'all have a good night.